good morning, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Fabrizio Bianchi uh, from CNRS and uh, laboratory Paul and the Red Nick. Uh, we'll talk about dynamical stability and supply locations from one to several complex variables. Okay, thank you very much. So, first of all, it's uh, I'm really happy to be again in Warsaw and it's a real honor for me to be here. Uh, after I did the first time work uh, for uh, the previous semester and then I had system in 2015, it was a posterior very important then for my studies and my career. Uh, and then, uh, in particular, uh, this is not the, to the topic on which we will give the course in next week, uh, but, but it's related to a course that was presented by François Bertelo in, in the previous edition of the semester. So what I would like to do in this course uh, about the theory of stability and replication in one and several complex variables is more to do a, a review of what happened in this last uh, seven years after the last semester. And also there because, are notes in one center publications you submitted. Yes, yes, it is about no, there is a survey on about the state of the art uh, five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is not the topic that I'm always uh, happy to discuss with you, so it's uh, one of the So the so the goal of this talk. Uh, is to quickly review the theory of uh, stability and replication in one dimension, mainly for motivation, and uh, we present the generalization of this theory, essentially of the theory of the number of cells in higher dimension, I mean for dynamical system in higher dimension. And uh, more, even more than the details, it's more to present the panorama of uh, recent results from this, open questions, and then uh, and, and, and the video. So, the very, very general uh, is the following is that uh, in holomorphic dynamics, we are given a holomorphic endomorphism of a complex manifold. Here, for most of this talk, uh, at, the, at least at the beginning, we can just take F to be a polynomial of a rational map on C or on P1. This is the Then we will move on a more complicated setting. And uh, there are kind of two types of questions that I will keep going on and uh, to, to compare. The first type of question is the following. We are given one system, you are given one pointer, and then you want to understand the orbits. Or if you want, you are given a system and you want to understand how generic orbit behave, for example. Is it true that if you move a bit the point, you get the same orbit or question like this? Then there is a second type of question, in some sense more, more deeper, which is the following. Now you are given a family of maps of a certain type, for example, quadratic polynomials, we can find like some parameter. And you want to understand uh, what are the like generic features of, of these maps. How we should we think about the generic polynomial of the region, for example? Given some property, for example, we can take it as Is it true that the generic polynomial in an appropriate sense satisfies this property? So now we would like to understand all the family of a given dynamical system of certain type and understand how we should think about uh, of a generic uh, system. So in this case, of course, if we start in this generality, of course, it's, uh, it's quite uh, hard to get something. So let's start very, very easy. Uh, in dimension one, we take polynomial on C. Okay. It's, uh, yes, since, uh, since this is the topic, uh, uh, I will make, I already put this comment that this will mainly a talk on rational dynamics. In particular, I will not touch on the part of transcendental dynamics. For which I'm not at all expert, but this is a more more. So when I think about talk about polynomials, the point of view that I have in mind is that those are rational maps. So it maybe will be the, the the point of view. So if I take uh, a polynomial on C, it's uh, it's quite I guess most of the people here are not comfortable with this. And we can decompose the, the C parts. <laughs> One is called the uh, Papu State, one is usually a set. I don't want to enter precisely the definition with normal families because we will not use it. And precisely because it will not work in higher dimension. So I don't want even to use this. But uh, the point is that we can decompose C in two parts. Uh, one with the property that, let's say, like this if you, have, if you know the dynamics of a point, you know the dynamics of the points nearby. So let's start with this very, very bad sense. Uh, and then there's the chaotic set, the Julia set, uh, for which uh, if you move a bit the point, uh, the orbit changes drastically. Now, I will use actually two equivalent characterization of, 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 of the Julia set, uh, which, which, if you want, you can take it as the finished one. One is the fact that uh, not only, so if you have a periodic point and this periodic, this periodic orbit is expanding, so the multiplier is expanding, this point is chaotic because close to it, the point will go out. Will go out. Now, these points here are dense in the Julia set. So if you want, you can just change the definition and take as the definition of Julia said the closure of, of, of the periodic. 
Now, this is the kind of topological characterization to be used. But the most important that I want to use is the second one, is that there exists a measure which is canonical, which is the unique measure of maximal system, maximal entropy for the system. It's not important for this talk to know what is the entropy, but the point is uh, that it's uh, well defined, it is unique. It's a kind of canonical measure as a good bit. And uh, the Julia said is the support of it. This is the point of view that we did. So this is the point of view from measure theory, and this has chance to work in that mm -hmm. So this is the just the object, the definition. And uh, now, as I said, there is this dichotomy in, in the phase space uh, that uh, you can you can take the, the the set where orbit behave nicely and the set where orbit behave not nicely in a chaotic way. Now the question: if we want to move uh, from the first type of question to the second type of question, is kind of time to the same in the parameter. We would like to decompose a parameter space now. For example, take the family of quadratic polynomials and you parameterize the with some parameter. You would like to know if it's true that now you can decompose the parameter space into parts. One with the property that if I move a bit the parameter, the global dynamic is essentially the same. For example, I can say precisely the same that the, this decomposition is essentially the same. For example, the Julia set moves uh, continuously for the half of the And on the other hand, the bifurcation will be the set for which, uh, if I move a bit the parameter, the global dynamic is changing. If I try to picture, make a picture of the Julia set, the global dynamic, the global dynamic is but it will be kind of the point. It's true that in the parameter space, I can kind of play this thing. And of course, uh, before I say that we have these two characterizations here, it actually were more important than the definition itself. Uh, the, the closure of a very precise, precise uh, type of, of, of points and the support of the measure. Our motivation is to find a type of parameter that somehow plays the role of, of the repelling points, uh, which are dense in the, the definition. And if possible, to find the measure like this, which is precisely supported on the mm -hmm. Now, I will not enter in, 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 this, in this topic later, but the motivation for this is that if you have a Julia set, you know, for example, the periodic points are, are density or range of points. Once you have a measure, canonical measure, you can start asking questions like uh, are they equidistributed with respect to it? As they, do we have a, a range of points equidistributed with respect to measure? Once you have a measure of the parameter space, you can start asking, is it true that I can start the distribution of certain parameters with respect to the measure? Can I start the speed of the distribution? We're not entering this, but this is the kind of the motivation to the measure. Okay, so I don't think it's very surprising for uh, most of the people here that in dimension one, uh, it's possible to give a very natural dichotomy of, uh, of uh, stability and location in the following sense. Uh, it comes from the basis. That uh, a number of uh, car possible characterization stability that we could write, they are equivalent. So these, uh, once we have a number of, of characterization type equivalent, may give us the motivation. Okay, okay, we found a good notion of stability because they are equivalent. Now, maybe let's start. The, the third one is one that we can see better in the same instead with the picture with the computer in the house of topology from Mark said, the Julia said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is equivalent to the fact that if I take my dense set of periodic points as I said before, each of them moves holomorphically with the parameter. Now I can follow each of them, the point is this, I can follow each of them thanks to the infinity function here. If I have, I will open the this picture like this. If I have a parameter that I can see, if I have here, say a fixed or a periodic point, just solving the equation as n of z is equal to z the lambda, I can find the graph moving this repelling point. This one. The point is that what the first condition says is that for every point here, I have a common neighborhood here for which I move them all together. Because each the fact that they move one by one is uh, is immediate, it's not a condition. So that's the point in the function. Now, the, the point here is that one press two, the, the this two are equivalent. Once you have the motion for this dense set of, uh, of points, uh, actually you can promote this motion to a, to a set to a, a motion like this uh, for every point you have a graph uh, and they don't intersect. Uh, for all the points in the Julia set. And the important feature here is that motions of the distinct point motions. Okay, so in some sense, you can really conjugate the dynamic from a parameter to the other. It's again the same dynamics up to a kind of a change of parameter. Okay, now, so this figure is equivalent. And the fourth one that I want to mention, I will enter more in detail on this later, because I need it later, but 
Just think of Israeli parameter for now as uh, the analog that we were looking for and the dependent ones. They are a specific, special kind of parameter that, in particular, if I write it this way, it means that they are all contained in the distribution and they are dense in the distribution. They are related to the dynamics of the dependent parameter. I will give the definition later, but think of them for now as they, we solved the problem of finding a, a type of parameter which are dense, countable, and dense in the distribution. Okay, now. So this is just as the, the conditions. The main example, of course, we have in mind is the Mandelbrot set. sector. If I take this square plus lambda and I try to picture uh, what happens, well, picture it means uh, we should decide how we can make the picture. Right? Let's say that uh, there are ways to do it. If I think of this, uh, every white component here is, is a place where uh, if I take any parameter inside for all these components, I can move automatically the data set, or I can move the periodic points, or I can move continually the and these various parameter, whatever they are, are dense here in the boundary. Mm -hmm. Now, the first two comments to make on this picture are the following. So, first, uh, uh, well, no, as I gave this definition here of stability, by definition, it's an open condition because I always say it in the neighborhood. It's not a priori then clear that it's, it exists. I could have just defined something that never happens. So, it's, uh, this will not give an interesting decomposition. The point is that. It follows from mm -hmm. essentially this theorem and the fact that the critical set is finite. Uh, this I want to strike because it's again an opponent will not have any information. <laughs> that uh, this definition here gives uh, a condition which not only is not empty in any family, but actually mm -hmm. yes. So for every family, polynomial or random answer, the stability set is open and dense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this says okay, at least it makes sense. On the other hand, now we should not think that the bifurcation is, is, is essentially trivial. Now we can say maybe I have families where it's stable or not for the parameter space. Of course, if I take a disk here, it will be stable. But for example, if I take an algebraic family, like this one, or something parameterized here by an algebraic curve, is it true that I always have bifurcation? And here again, the answer is yes, in a very strong sense. Not only I always have bifurcation, but the household dimension of the bifurcation law is always maximum. If I take a, a complex one parameter space, the household dimension of the location goes. So, in some sense, it says that this, uh, the composition is always well defined. The stability always exists and is uh, generic in some sense. Mm -hmm. it, it, in some sense, it's a step toward the, the conjecture I mentioned before. So, it's generic. On the other hand, the bifurcation does not contain open sets because uh, otherwise, stability will not be less, but it is as close as possible to be, to be of dimension. Okay, it's also mentioned. Okay. Uh, let me say, not in this case, this is still open, an open question, but in some cases, for some families, in some sense, for the family of rational maps, uh, whatever, one can also say that the area is positive. So it means not only the Dow's dimension is true, but actually the area, the future area is the maximal dimensional area is positive. But it's, it's more specific. So we go maybe on. <laughs> So let me say what does this parameter. Uh, it's a kind of mantra, a general idea in the analytical system, especially in this part, that what does the critical point, the critical dynamics, uh, decide what happens of the global dynamics? Here is very true in this setting. The point is that if I take, for example, to make it simple, just the family I said before, c squared plus lambda, I have one critical point, which is zero. So if I if I the claim is that if I control what is the orbit of zero. In the parameter, I control the global dynamics. What does it mean? Okay, if now I take uh, my graph parameterizing the, 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 the critical point uh, and I take the orbit of the parameter, okay, so now I have uh, the critical point, so and I take the family of the term. Mm -hmm. Well, I take this, uh, I check when it's normal or not. Uh, now, it's not, I, I will give a version of this that it's, doesn't, it's not necessary to say normal, but for now, let's keep it normal. The point is that this sequence here is normal precisely on the stability and it's not normal precisely no, on the bifurcation, in the sense that points where it's not normal in the neighborhood are the bifurcation. So, thanks just to understanding the critical set, one can understand if the family was stable or not. Now, if I have now, suppose that I have a repelling point, which means this, for example, is the fixed point, which is repelling. I have my critical set, and after some iteration, I have a crossing like this transversal. After, if, if I keep iterating, this picture becomes more and more better. Mm -hmm. So, if my, my critical set meets the repelling orbit, 
It cannot be more than because it's a different label. So this says that if I define this wave parameter, like this, uh, the crossing between the critical orbit and the, and the referring points, uh, this is inside the visual function. Now it's a bit more, it's more, more tricky to put the opposite. Not only that the visual parameters parameter defined this way are in the visual locus, but actually they are less. This I will not touch on this uh, on this now in this work. Uh, but the point is that this is why this kind of parameter can be thought as uh, the analog in the parameter space of the reference. Here, yeah, really, the game is always to intercept what happens to the critical or the critical set. Here, they detect what happens, the critical set, when they touch the telling points, actually, it's a counter set, and this contains index in the image. So, this is the kind of parameter that plays some sense the role of the There are other, but it's enough for this work. Now, if I want to move now to the second goal, to find the measure of the parameter fix. That we want to, for example, to know the distribution of the parameters. Now, here I need to introduce an object. Uh, let me just uh, record a couple of definitions. That uh, given fix lambda, for example, here is a fix lambda in the parameter, which is the same as saying I fix uh, one element of the family, the search map map or whatever. The diagonal exponent, I, it will be maybe a bit pedantic now, but because then I will need it in higher dimension to be a bit less pedantic. So let's just say this. I, I integrate against my measure of maximal entropy. So if I'm using the point, I'm sorry. Point. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I take my measure of maximal entropy, which is unical, uh, unique, uh, canonical, as I said before, and I integrate uh, log, log of f prime. Okay, it is. It makes sense. Uh, if it's on steel, it would be better, but uh, let's say it makes sense also for rational mass. Uh, I should decide the matrix, but it's, it's fine. Now, this is a kind of Average expansion of, of what happens on the Julia set. Because if you take a point in the Julia set by the recovery body theorem for almost every point with respect to this measure, you have kind of these asymptotics. Okay, so this is saying in average how much the Julia set is expanded. Now, it is uh, the fact is that this function, if you see how it varies with lambda, first of all, it's continuous, which is a priori far from, far from clear because you have uh, this, this thing here is very simple. On the critical set. So you can expect problems when the critical set touches the Julia set because of your singularity here. This function here is, uh, uh, but first of all, it, 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 it's continuous. It's always actually positive, which is far from the, from the clear application uh, of And also it's subharmonic. So it's continuous and it's subharmonic. Now, subharmonic, we also write in the, we use a maybe strange formulation. This is just a complex Laplace that we also often use in a complex analysis. But just think that this function here of the parameter is the subharmonic. Okay? What does it mean that if I take the Laplace and I get a positive measure? And now you can get what is the positive measure I want to do. This, uh, this before, uh, let, let's take this one, which is a measure for now. Let's take one parameter to make things clear. Okay? I have one parameter, so you have C. I have this one, which is now is a measure, positive measure. This one is supported precisely on the diffusion. As always, there is one implication which is easier, another one which is not complicated. But the point is that this detects a kind of relation between what happens between the critical set. If you want, if I take this is minus infinity precisely on the critical set. Okay? So it intersects a relation, this is a relation between the, where the critical set is and where the critical set is. So it's kind of natural it can be one. So, and once we have a measure like this, uh, mm -hmm. we can start and study a quantitative wave diffusion, and we could do with the measure of mass entropy. And, uh, and so, this is a kind of motivation. So, this is kind of completes the picture I wanted to draw in dimension one. I will not say more, more than this. Uh. This is like uh, why I, I did this and I choose this, uh, this result to present. Uh, because now the motivation, the starting point, actually is. So, so yes, the L is a harmonic wave. So L, so it's always subharmonic and it's harmonic precisely with the stability. The, now the point is that bifurcation in a neighborhood is equivalent to the fact that this measure here is some mass. Mm -hmm. So it's harmonic precisely on the on, on, on the on the stability. In particular, on the Mandelbrot set is even clearer because uh, uh, it's really constant on the on, on the component. It's just a lot of but for rational functions, there is not even if it will be a single because they cannot use binary. But yes, it's harmonic precise and distributed. So we could add, if you want, here, very good. Pi, for example, we could say L of lambda is harmonic. This is the answer. Okay. 
and uh, we could study more, 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 more precisely, not only continuous, we could do this for their continuous, which means that it measures the what, what well behavior as is the game function. So it is really parallel of the measure of Now, so the, the question, if you want, the motivation of everything now is this. Is this. Well, once we want, once we have this, uh, in this kind of theory well established, established we want to do this. We want to find, we want to take some families of dynamical system in higher dimension, and I will say which one. Right? We want to say that, for example, in domorphism of PK or uh, Hell Mass, uh, things in higher dimension. And now the question is is it true that for this family of dynamical system now, can I do it? Can I find a decomposition of the parameter space into parts? One, again, with the number of possible uh, characterization of stability that are equivalent, in order to say, okay, now that makes sense. And uh, on the other hand, uh, it give a strong characterization of all the dynamical features giving a dislocation. For example, here I say we will parameter to get dislocation, or I can also say parabolic points or parabolic implosion. There, are, there is a list, but I should do one just an example. Is, can we also in this case find a list of phenomena that if they, if they happen in dislocation, if there are not, there is Of course, this will depend on the class of maps of map that we choose, but this is a kind of general of map, general motivation. So the specific system that I consider here, it's a choice. I will, I will compare with other theory going on, but it's a following. I, I, I choose to take the natural generalization of a rational map, rational map is a holomorphic map from P1 to P1. I take PK any dimension, and I take a holomorphic map from P2. What does the system generalize is the expanding behavior. Already think that the generic point here will be reflecting. Okay, it is an expanding system. Now, if formally just means that I take some homogeneous polynomials uh, and, and then I, I, I take the, I mean, some homogeneous polynomial on CK plus one and then I, I project on, on BK, mm -hmm. as I do with two polynomials, well, to make things easier, you can just think that you, you can take, for example, homogeneous polynomial in CK and then this will give something also on BK. But this is a bit more complicated because we have some condition, but think that you have a natural family of polynomials. For example, not of this is important. You want families of polynomial and extending. We have to do that. So just, just a, a formal definition. Or think of there's a polynomial in higher dimension like a family. I will give a more dramatic definition now in a moment. The point is that if we take this system, it is still true that you can define the Julia set as the support of a unique measure of maximal entropy. So we take this as a definition, okay? We forget on the rest of my normality. Is it still true that you have periodic repetitive points and they are dense in the Julia set? Here I should ju just pay a bit of attention because it's possible that some repetitive points are outside the Julia set. Some sporadic points are, in some sense, in some region, there are not many, so the measure has not mass. It, it can happen. This is just technical. So in the industry, yeah. the law of the degree? Or? Yes. Log of the topological degree. Topological. If you take, for example, of this map, if the all components have degree D, here yeah, the topological degree D power K, mm -hmm. and then to this K log. So this is the this is the so I will get there later, but in some sense, think that in higher dimension, the, the, the kind of dichotomy, the, the kind of uh, positive, what, what would be positive entropy in this case it's more or something like larger than K minus one log D. This is the kind of natural threshold for many dynamical phenomena, and we will come again later. Okay, this is the kind of analog of positive entropy. For example, once a measure is more than this entropy, you are sure that it supports this. This one, it's not positive entropy. Positive entropy is not strong enough. In some sense, this set is a geometrical, those are points expanding in all k direction. Okay, if you have points expanding in one but repelling in the other, maybe you don't expect that they are inside this set because entropy is not enough. Is this a level of space? So, but this is the set that we have to take for now. And uh, a remark that I want to take right away is that if you take now the critical set, uh, which is very important in the one dimensional theory, because you find a set of points, uh, here now is a inverse surface. Of course, you could say it's an inverse surface of dimension one. Here yeah. yeah, it means the same thing set. Uh, mm -hmm. No, it's not true. Every, everything that you could think of, we use the fact that the critical points are finite. Yeah. <laughs> It has no possibility for but now if you are going to use two, the, the, the critical set is a critical set. It's not true that you have a final number of this is what I mean. 
<laughs> now, more generally, I could consider a, this family of maps, a, this family of, uh, of, 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 of system. I take an open voice uh, uh, in CK view, and I ask for maps, which are holomorphically proper, it just means the boundary of the boundary. For example, all polynomials satisfy the big mind. I could take this a generalization in higher dimension. Why I can take this or this one? The theory will be very similar. This uh, is a this is a finite dimension, it is very algebraic in some sense. But this is infinitely dimensional. In some sense, this captures the expanding difficulty. So in some sense, geometrically it's even more similar to think about it. Just take a big ball and it goes to in a larger. Now, this is infinitely dimensional. So here it's more difficult to say something like uh, a maximum house of dimension of uh, things like this. But so if you want to think of an algebraic precise family, you take endomorphism. Lift uh, of endomorphism with maps like this, because they are much so they are like this. But this is a really huge, huge map, huge family. So it, it contains an one. No, 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 this is still a funding. Eh? This is still a ball, 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 ball. So it's, yes, in particular, this is always, a, this is a covariance of degree, say, some degree to one. So it's, it's a really a covariance one. Again, points are repetitive. Yes, yeah, the geometric is repetitive. It doesn't contain an empty, but no, it's not empty. It's a theory that we compare. But, uh, okay, so this is the system. Eh? Okay, so what I want to do now, at least, uh, is to, Take uh, just one piece of the theory of one dimension and try to check if it works. Let's try that. Let's try this exercise. Let's try to take the lambda lemma, which is uh, the lemma that says if repelling points from holomorphically, let's say, then hold this data set holomorphically and try to check if there's a chance to work. Let's just do this exercise. Okay, let's just take uh, the student, take the proof, uh, check if it works in high dimension. It will not work. So <laughs> let's try it. How it is in one dimension? I get the motion of my repelling points. Okay, I have my motions. Mm -hmm. Now, if I have to say in three lines the proof of the uh, lemma, the first line is the family is compact. I can take some things, which means if I have all the motions here of, of all the points, uh, if I take, uh, if I have an extra point here, if I have a point here and I want to define the motion of a point which is not repelling. I want to find a graph of it. First of all, I approximate this point with repelling points. I take all the motion of this point, this, uh, this, this, this repelling points, and I take some limit. Some limit will exist because of the limit the is So there are some motion. Now, the question is uh, is there one motion or two? Because if uh, for every point I have only one motion, okay, I have all of them, I read them. The problem is if I have two motion, mm -hmm. this is the problem. Now, how can I exclude this actually in one dimension? And actually, in one dimension, it's always zero. Because if you have one point and if you have two sequences of repelling points going there, but with two different limits here, who is theorem if you apply to the difference between the, the limit and the, and the approximate sequence? Tells you that uh, if I have an intersection in the limit, I must have intersection, mm -hmm. which gives the intersection between motion of different repelling points, which is impossible or by assumption because we say that they move. In the case specific of repelling points for any value of this function theorem, but in particular, you see, I didn't even need that they were repelling points. It's true for evidence. If I can move against set, thanks to who is, if I have intersection, then limit I have intersection. Mm -hmm. Let me just say it's how to use who is in dynamics. As soon as I have a dimension two, which means three in a one square parameter space, who is space, I can have a two sequence of lines that in the limit uh, go intersect without intersecting I have enough space. So this one pays the money. Okay, so this is the other thing. Exercise done. <laughs> now, now there is a more difficult exercise. <laughs> now we have to try to replace this. Now, what I want to uh, say here is that well, the, the starting point is, uh, is this theorem that actually was presented by my and a number of years ago. Now. And uh, is that it's possible in this family, very very long in this amount of here, to generalize. The theory of uh, in the following sense. But first of all, we can say that uh, uh, if all the repelling points move holomorphically, take uh, this first condition, forget for now this asymptotically. If all the repelling points move holomorphically, I have the second one. Mm -hmm. I, maybe I cannot move all the Julia set holomorphically, but I can move a full measure subset of the Julia set. 
It's a version up to zero measures. You already see that the tools will not be good with, but there will be some effort to it. And you see, it means that up to a zero measure subset, we have a Okay. This uh, is equivalent to the fact that the Yapian function is harmonic. The, 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 the extra condition I did before is again is equivalent. There are no misery parameters again. Now, remark that now the critical set is an intersect. So there will be X to be some extra care to take uh, what does precisely mean this intersection, but it's equivalent. Now, notice that does that in order to get that this condition implies the first, so is a bit technical. I will not discuss in this, this order, but asymptotically, all means the following. If uh, for every n I have kind of t power n repelling points, uh, let's say, which is for this case, it means that I can move dn minus a little o is again a version uh, up to zero major subset. And it's natural because if I start with some condition, I've already lost something, it's a bit difficult to recover the whole condition. So this I don't need, of course, in one direction, but it's there to have uh, the distance. So if you want to continue one or two as version a bit weaker. But uh, in the spirit of everything, both of them are in the sense up to measure zero. So, this is the theorem. This is like the, the possible uh, uh, sum of the equivalences. Okay. Now, two comments I want to put here is that if in dimension one I could explain all the theorem and I could have said here a much longer without talking about the other time, I could have said uh, everything. All the theory, all the literature, and the theory, without talking about the other time, and then. I say, okay, 20 years later, one can say, okay, I introduced this a canalization or uh, in uh, it's for us in maps, uh, it's, uh, but it, it's not something necessary for the theory. It gives a new point of view, much more useful, but it's not necessary. Here, we have no way to find also to say that one implies two without passing to the condition. Mm -hmm. So everything here really around here goes around the condition. And, uh, of course, I could do everything without hiding the up, but it's not the point. So, in some sense, if condition two was saying uh, we are doing things up with a logic theory up to measure zero, condition three is giving up the other ingredient. The other ingredient is purely potential theory. Because this one, now we don't expect measure, there will be currents, of the currents in current dimension, this will be a real degree. This will replace the compactness state of the dimension. Now, another comment I want to make. Is that here I focused on the family of expanding systems. This is the most, po most possible large family I can take of expanding system in high dimension. The whole population. I could take other systems. For example, I could take automorphism of dimension, of dimension. I could take NOMAS. These are completely transversal. For example, our automorphism, there is not even critical set. There is one to one. Points here, here I say the family points are important. Geometrically, this is expanding. And on maps, geometrically, are set of sets. So they are one expanding and one contracting direction. Here, there is a parallel theory, due essentially to the other than Jubic and Berger. I will mention the related result now while I keep going on this theory here. But uh, we can discuss maybe another, another point. The, some parts are easier, some parts are not easy, because some parts are not. In particular, as we talked about today, I'm not aware that in this theory here, they can put some things. It's not done for correlation, and really because it's a uh, there are some conditions, some sense in how in for uh, general math you can restrict with stable and unstable manifold the kind of things of dimension one, no? but uh, it is not clear how to get the full potential interpretation. Also, it's not clear to me if this works in higher dimension, in some sense where you don't have one one high dimension. But again. As we will see, this is also a suitable inspiration for some of the results that we say. So it's a little theory of the impact. Now, I said we have no exponents. What is the gap of exponent here? <laughs> because in dimension one is quite clear in the great log of uh, of um, here in dimension k. I again I can take this function here, it's just the log of the just of the end is okay, is again a function, blah blah. The point is that we should think in higher dimension that again by using the theorem k gap of exponent. If you think of a product map, you have k of x, okay, which is the expansion of the Okay, yeah, I'm just saying, uh, uh, I could say all the gap of and define each of them independently in the way. And this function here that I take here, when I say the gap of x, is the sum of the gap. In some sense, it's the volume expanding of this. And notice that still today, it's not one, every time I go back to this theorem, it's not still clear to me. The deep reason for which a volume condition 
is related to the fact that if you have a repelling bond, which becomes a set, but it's still with the same volume, for example, sure, still different. You need before to know that all Lyapunov exponents are non negative. Yes. Yes. Here, it's a theorem by a mm -hmm. number of people that also this function is always positive. Mm -hmm. Actually, each of them independent is positive. Mm -hmm. This function is continuous, this function is normal. Mm -hmm. So, this part, uh, since there is a word of harmonic behind, this is not a word. It's not very difficult to prove that they are more than But uh, this is enough for us that this function is continuous and superharmonic. Okay. So, another condition that I didn't do before is that in dimension one, we say that. The orbit of the critical set is normal. There is no much hope to say something like normal and higher dimension, but we could interpret this as saying in dimension one that the mass of the critical orbit is bounded or it diverges at speed to power n after one to complete in total. This is the same in higher dimension. If I take the critical set in the product space and I see the mass of this, of this, of this it's not a graph but because there is an equal surface every parameter, but you know, I think this object that it's mass. Okay, it's really the volume, right? Like, you know, this, uh, if there is no bifurcation, it grows as if again you find this scale minus one, mm -hmm. which is the natural. If there is bifurcation, it is not zero, it grows. So, just studying the growth of the critical set in mass, it tells you the bifurcation. So, this in my mind is a kind of equivalence to the normality or not. In the Notice that here it's not, it does not make a lot of sense to talk about critical point one by one, for example. We cannot talk about the exact physical capacity because it's an interface. Points are the same. So this is the point. I want I want, I want putting a comment here that still today, the fact that the volume expanding condition is uh, related to what happens to repelling point one by one, which still they could stay in the same volume expansion but become subtle, for example. It's not extremely significant to me, actually. The, the deep moral is not. But still, this is the equivalence. So let me just uh, say something quick about this uh, about this theorem, and I will focus just on one point, and it's how to get the Zandarma. So in dimension one, if one goes to the theory, there are a couple of tools that are quite important. We say Montel, okay. In in particular, as soon as we start studying maps and inverse branches, which are the anomorphic maps for which we can have distortion and curve, it is very important. Once once. As soon as one would start studying uh, the real world that we find, uh, these things do not work in high dimension, they are very much. What we all what we use to replace these tools uh, is essentially pluripotential theory, and in particular the theory of positive growth currents to find a space that replaces the compactness property of the So the first tool will be to replace the problem in a compact something with the from a problem of growth positive growth currents in order for some compactness uh, that we can. Second, the second thing will be to do the body theory to get up our results almost, almost. In particular, if we have to make a picture of the lambda lemma that doesn't work, if I try to apply the dimension one, even assuming that I can do something like Montel to take the limits, I take all possible limits, I get something like this. I maybe I can get something that a lot of branch, a branch motion. Ah. I have a branch motion here. Things intersect, I cannot distinguish them. Okay, it's not very fine. But what I can do is that at the level of measure, I can prove that the measure can be followed. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe it's not maybe the branch, but the measure doesn't see the branch. But I can say in some sense, I have a measure here that by some natural map is sent to another measure. So I can put all the measures together at maximum. Now, with respect to these measures, and you already see that if I take a lot of measures in a product space, I'm going to talk about the right? I want to prove that up to taking out a zero measured subset that every slice of this picture, actually, the picture is there. So, the really bad guys that do some intersection are the zero measured subset. But let me just say not the real result, but the, the, the point of view. Instead of studying points, uh, here I say I have a lot of graphs. Let's take all of them. I take all the graphs yeah. in the product space uh, that are always in the genus. Okay, these are the all possible motions. Now, the game is up to taking out the small part of this. I want to say that almost all these graphs are not touching. Okay, on every graph I can apply F at any point because it's all in the same. Apply F, same I give F another graph. So, this is the dynamical system. And we can study this dynamical system. Now, 
it will not come as a surprise that if I want to style the dynamical system, it's not uniform net funding. Now it's only matrix space. But there is one problem that as soon as I get in a dynamical system, usually I can say I understood the dynamical system. And it is as more or less the upper Now, in a matrix space, I cannot say what is a diapo vector. But I can interpret what does it mean that the more or less the upper vector. The entities, if the balls are contracted exponentially by the user. If I get this uh, from the point of view of whatever I want to do, it's like if I have the upper vector in front of me, because the balls are contracted by the solution. And this is what we do. If we take uh, for a generic graph, you take a tuber on the graph, like uh, all the graphs staying always with this, uh, I take the inverse iteration of this, uh, and we can prove that this uh, shrink exponentially goes back. This note is that for every parameter, the parameter this is known, what is the positivity of the diagonal vector? The game works. But if you have to put this all uniform in the parameter, okay, so you have to take the size and the contraction uniform in the parameter and in most of all the graphs. This is the point. I will not uh, say precisely why, how we get this one, huh? but the point is that once you get this, uh, suppose that you have this record, the, the contraction in the vector value. Now, suppose that. Uh, Let's check it. Suppose that the system is invertible. I mean, I, I leave to the, uh, to the natural extension, for example. I have a system which is contracted. Now, suppose that I have a lot of crossing. Okay, so a lot of crossing, for example, is unnumbered. By quantum recurrence theorem, if I have a big set of graphs that intersect with some angle, most of them they come back to the same angle. But if they contract exponentially, all of them cannot come back. So, so this means that in the space of grass, I can get this up to some years. So we have to use the angle of intersection and say that contraction yeah. and yeah. angle. Yes, yeah. 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 I have to fix a parameter, I have to fix a ball, and to say I define a ramification function which is uh, given a graph to the scoop of all the distance that I get from this one, this ball, uh, of all the other graphs. Uh, this goes to the exponential vector uh, iteration. But the set of ramification algebra than alpha, uh, almost every point here has to come back. Uh, so the measure is this for the alpha, which means that for all for all the angle for all distance, the measure is not. And how do you get proper recurrence? Ah, it's just because I apply the inverse system. I take the inverse system, so it becomes compacting. So and what, what, what I the use the what, what is the definition? Ah, it's easy it's one, it's one, because once I have the measure transparency of it, as I said here, I can induce the, something here in, in the product here, which at every slice is the measure transparency. That's what I want to do. This gives me a measure on the space of graphs. I can say a set of graphs as the measure that, for example, at every slice is the measure of the part of the inverse. This is the measure. Now, this is a constant Jacobian. This measure here. So, oh, in the other direction, what, what is the measure in the other direction? Is there any natural? You can still use the same because, in this case, you have a measure of constant Jacobian, which means that all the branches are the same mass. So, once you lift, it's also invariant in the other direction. It's not only invariant. It's what you say if you have a measure. Invariant means if you have a measure of here, M, I have a deep image, for example. Invariant means the sum of these three masses will be positive. But this is uh, more than this. It's like M over 3, M over 3, M over 3. It's uh, what you say, constant Jacobian. So if I lift uh, and I take in the space of grass from behind, actually all, all the histories are the same. Up to a constant, it's, it's a real invariant of the other. Very good point. I think that's the system. And I have to use it never to the constant. So, Yes, that's right. So, and, and, and this is kind of the argument behind the court. It's uh, more detailed than what I say, but it's uh, up to this classroom here. And, uh, but this is really the, the main point of the construction, okay? Finding an equivalent of a small reaction vector. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me just say that once one has this construction, I use it for one implication, but it's kind of the construction behind everything. If you want to find, once you have uh, the most on the repelling points. Now, what they are repelling points? They are repelling points for, for the system of the graphs, in some sense. The repelling graph. So, once you have this machine, you can say, okay, now I do like being involved. I do the construction of inverse branches in this, in this, in this system, and I find also a lot of repelling points after once we have this. So, this is how we also build the repelling graphs. So, it's really the same construction behind all the machines. 
And in order to make it work, all the new information that I say is severely because of this condition, Laplacian of the uh, of, uh, of yeah. is, is zero. So this is a is a mix that makes me make all the things here. Okay, so let me stop maybe on this part here because it's um, a little bit old. I think the next talk otherwise will be will be late. So let me just make some questions here, just uh, some comments and some questions. Uh, first of all, if we see the theorem that, that I said uh, and we put it uh, close to the one-dimensional one, let me say something that uh, some first question I don't see. Okay, we have this theory. But is it still true that uh, the stability and the, uh, and the continuity in the house of sense are correct? Yeah, I didn't say it. Notice it's true or not. So, of course, is it true? Is it still true that stability as a defined in dense or uh, it's not dense, the low dense sets of equation is true or not? How much is this almost all points that I say? Then it's like, these are maybe the three first questions one can ask you. And uh, I think that we have the answer of none of them in the Now I can answer. So let me talk. So the first one and the second one, the answer is not. Actually, there are families for which uh, the Julia set depends continuously in the order of sense of the, on the parameter, but uh, the family it is this. So they are not related. A priori, they are not related. Again, this is just one specific family. I'm not saying, uh, and still we don't know yet. So they, I think it's one of the main questions. Open. In the family of all endomorphism, I don't know if it's a but in a specific family, I know that uh, you, you can be unstable, but still, this is a second one. Maybe it's not continuous if you are talking about direct, but we don't. So there exists an explicit family of endomorphism such that the Julia set is continuous, but in different ways. Not only this, actually, there's an open set. In this. So, in the most strong sense, actually, the first one is also in the uh, not one. And uh, it's the, on the other hand, also, it's not true that there is a dense set. You can have a family which is called evolution. By star, it's just technical, it just means that it's an algebraic family, just that the parameter is not alone. And uh, so, this is the ah, in the, in the case of Henry Marx, the fact that there's no desk stability is discussed, and it goes back to the theorem of knowledge. It's not an element, but still, you can always say not Marx. So, uh, the point is that here it's, I say the theorem that for one family. Actually, the direction of research that has been done uh, a lot has been to really study if there are open sets that we the show in the family of endomorphism, all the endomorphism. If I take the family of all the endomorphism of a given degree, I fix k, I fix the degree, now it's a final dimensional family. Okay, this is why I don't focus much on this one, which is easy, but here I can say all the family, like all the rational maps of dimension one of, of, uh, of the given principle. Yeah, there are open sets of degree. This is uh, based on the idea of Blender. Came from real dynamics, which I'm not going to talk about, but uh, this I would say is one of the bigger that came out uh, recently on this, uh, on this topic. The, there are open sets in the different dimension of it, really, really strong in the sense that really robust, really for all the things inside, and really the global. Okay, now, so this I stopped for, I could go on, on, on the details on the open set unification, but I stopped here. I want just to say something on these other conditions here and the total uh, ramification. Now, as I said, you have uh, uh, the motion, as I said, is unbranched for almost every point for the visual maximum. You can ask uh, what happens for other methods. I mean, there are other environments. Is it true that uh, it's uh, I can still improve and say okay, it's unbranched for all invariant measures, for example, or something like this? Notice that in the case of Hamilton mass. Uh, it is true. If you have, uh, you have this unbranched, this branched motion, okay? But actually, not only is unbranched, let's say, for the measure of motion, okay? But it's unbranched for all measure of positive density. This is the result of the green curve. So, inspired by this, we find is this true that in our setting, we can improve uh, this motion, the robotic motion, not only for an up to zero measure of the maximum entropy, but for a zero measure, for example, of all measure of sufficient density, which is quite kind of natural. Again, as soon as you lose this condition of entropy, you go outside the Julia set. So it's a, it's a really a, a problem that is actually not But as soon as you have this, you can have this. This was done with Kalima and Rakimov, who all the things are in the one of the years. And uh, so let me just mention that uh, this, this, uh, this, all I said, uh, 
as an algebraic one interpretation that can be over the minimum of minimum k. But we don't really use algebra. For example, it works as soon as something works in this family, which is not algebraic, it means that there is not really an algebraic structure behind the which we are using. Not a at all. I can perturb the meeting in any manner. So also this theorem here works in this same theorem of manager. Here it's just to be technical that uh, one could talk about dynamical degrees with the sum of invariant of dynamical system says how the volume grows in different levels of composite. In the case of PK here, points grow not, uh, line grows D, uh, plane grows D2, it's an uh, upward phase that grows to power K. So it's, it's very clear that you're right. In, this, in this case, here is far less clear what are the dynamical degrees and how they behave, if it's not on it or not. It's a theorem that we call in a Rachmoff, that actually also in this case, the, the dynamical degree, which are this invariant that you can associate, is monotonic. And in particular, it's you know, here, if you want to, if you want to generalize this theorem, this is just a tool. And now, just to finish, let me just say something that is related to the code system that we didn't think. Now, let me say this. We say I have the maximum maximal entity. It's unique for every parameter. So even if I don't know anything, I already know if I move something from here to here, I have to get the maximum maximal entity. And now I can start. Now I can take all the family of the mesh. For example, we began. Now I have a huge set here, a huge set. Okay. This is something that you open. In some sense, I don't have a natural way to associate with my measure here to measure here. But here in this setup, I can just say. It's not ramified, but it's not so natural to treat one to one. There is an intermediate uh, class, of course, coming from motivation from statistical uh, from thermodynamics, whatever, which are the two Instead of maximizing entropy, I can ask a maximizer, the threshold, which say I take a function, the given regularity, and I must try to maximize the, the entropy plus the integral of the yeah. I'm talking here in higher dimension because in dimension one, as soon as we have the lambda lemma, we can do everything. So it is not very interesting to generalize the measures in certain. But in higher dimension, for a quite uh, general class of pi, taught by Anna Bloom in advance, and then we will be in uh, for this work on this, uh, we could find the existence, the minimum, and some statistical properties of a good use case in higher dimension. Now, the point is that, in particular, what I said, since this class here has the entropy, we can apply what I said to this class. Here. And uh, it's uh, in particular one could prove uh, that these two notions, in some sense, are, are, are uh, work well one to each other. The notion of all one, all one with motion, as I say, of move from one parameter to the other, and the class of equilibrium state uh, actually work well. If you mm -hmm. doubt the equilibrium state, you move to that. Could you consider phi depending also on parameters? Yes, it depends on. Uh, in part here, I'm not saying it's the same part. Uh -huh. In particular, the point is how to move phi. Yes, 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 yes. It's not the same part. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, phi is precisely phi can be removed with the parameter. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's not uh, it's completely unrelated. Otherwise, already changing the coordinate change phi, for example, you need to the same part. So, yes, it has to change. But well, what I want to take here, just to say that this in particular, this one in particular this part will be the focus of the course that I'm giving next week. So, in particular, it's, I will focus on how to prove existence and some properties of the equilibrium states and the definition uh, using an approach again that comes from the dimension. I will, I will do it in dimension one. But the idea is to have an approach that works in any dimension without using the distortion in the branch. So this is the this is the kind of uh, but I will speak more much more on this next week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, comments? Okay. Ask also okay. people online. Ah, so oh, you can. So you would like to ask if I can. Uh, so could you could you repeat uh, at the moment you you introduced this dynamical system on graphs? I'm not sure if I if I understood well what kind of, what's what's exactly the di the dynamical system? Yes, yes, you can see that. And what's the measure? Okay. Uh, Invariant. Can I give this something? Yeah. Yes. Your go high is not. 
The moment you use the point of verify. Yes, 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 yeah, I mean, I have to define this nature. Mm -hmm. it's, it's always a delicate point because sometimes I don't define it. It's, it's important. Sometimes I define it. Usually it's, it's a high correlation when I use the public. So, so, so I usually do not define it. Either. So uh, as I say that, you have the space of graphs, okay? Mm -hmm. This is the basic term, okay? Mm -hmm. So they are class for each parameter, they are necessarily this. This is just this. You have the your map. Your map is like this. Okay, mm -hmm. even a graph in every point you go to another point. This is the holomorphic, I mean, whatever we define the holomorphic. So you say the holomorphic graph to an axiomorphic graph. Of course, this system now is it's not invertible. And it's not only it's not invertible, it's the sense that you don't have three images. Because, for example, taking the three image of a graph to them, yes. it's not even true that you can. The multiplicity is not even well defined because the three image of a graph is not a graph. Mm -hmm. So then this will pay attention. But the point is, this. in the future of the following, I define M, which is a measure of the space J here, to be uh, an equilibrium web. <laughs> web here in the sense that it's like the total one. If it is so a measure, let's say, uh, support probability. Of support compact in case you need it on uh, uh, J, which properties first is invariant. Okay, I just mean it's invariant for, for this system here. Mm -hmm. And then the second is that for every lambda, uh, lambda star of M is equal to M. What is this? This is the the projection that sends a graph to gamma. So on each fiber is just an so optimal measure? It's a measure, yes, it's a measure of the case of graphs. Mm -hmm. But if I cut this measure like a divider, mm -hmm. okay, it induces the measure of this fiber. Integration of these fiber. Yeah, but what was on the fiber? Oh. What was on the base? Which base? Uh, lambdas. Lambdas Lambda is the parameter. Yes, yes okay. but so if, if you project it to, to the space lambda, what do you get? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. no. Oh, so, <laughs> no, no, no. So you somehow integrate no, no. maximum yeah, measures we, along we line. But not only as measures. I mean, if I just wanted to find the uh, I do the measure one, if I just wanted to find a way to integrate for the measure, mm -hmm. this is the key. I just take a BDC of the green uh, evaluated in both the variable and still like that. This is but this exists also in the very not table. Oh, oh. This is uh, always true. What I'm saying is that I already giving a laminarity structure to this tower. Because this is saying it's, it's like to say, let me call this W, for example. Mm -hmm. W is a, an equilibrium current here with the property that I slice every parameter I get to know. But this exists for every time, even stable or not. What I'm saying is that W is essentially an average against M, the family of grass. Of the integration on, on the on the graph. Okay, okay. So this is in, in the world of uh, complex analysis, usually it's called woven or laminar with the laminar. There are notions like this, uh, which are currents in a case of dimensional dispute, for example, mm -hmm. which are not only a current, but it's a, a, in some sense a limit of currents that are geometrical, mm -hmm. like integration of, for example, in an analytical sense. And the limit maybe it's not the integration of some set, but mm -hmm. it, it's an approximation. Mm -hmm. In a big part of the system is an approximation. In particular, in this case, this can be perspective. Oh, so, a priori, I have my initial M the parameter is a piece of graphs. And I just say that I have my measure that tells me here, here you should get a measure of M. But it doesn't tell me how much it is So, if you want the gauge, the language of line and current is to say that this current here, which is a woven or which is a whatever. Is a strongly laminar in the sense that after removing a few of these uh, zero major set for this, uh, what you get is really a laminar, like all the, all the plugs are in mm -hmm. so the setting of laminar. Mm -hmm. This uh, is a current, not an issue. This is a current mm -hmm. one one in for that space, uh, such that if you slice the current very parameter, it's better. But this is the other thing. And if you want, the, the, the point here is that. If you have the motion of the recurring points, uh, you can get it. The, why? Because you have the motion of the recurring points. Uh, you tell you go to the limit, maybe the limit across, uh, 
but in the limit, you will get the grass. Maybe they are wrong, maybe it was better, but in the limit, you get the grass. In particular, every rectangular grass is a delta of the space. Okay? You can take the sum of all the rectangular graphs of this, you divide by another. This is the measure, it's a probability measure of the space compact. You just take the measure. You take the, the limits of the okay. If the rectangular points move, you don't this. Mm -hmm. Then the problem is that at each point is current to the limit. Mm -hmm. It's to remove all the settings. But the existence of this is, uh, is no more than that. Instead of just doing uh, with the green, uh, one with uh, yeah, the, the approximation of the repelling grass, uh, and uh, you have something with uh, some kind of lambda structure. Again, mm -hmm. only of the settings. Mm -hmm. Once you have this, then of course you, you want to get that you have uh, up to a zero, uh, up to a zero visual set for this now, you have the whole I mean, I think. But this is the measure of the, mm -hmm. the natural measure. The natural measure of here is the one as well. Yes, we can perform the other question later. Let's uh, uh, thank for this again. Yeah. 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 Yeah.